As hijacking incidents increase year on year across South Africa, there are new trends which motorists should be aware of. Hijackings in drive through queues at fast food outlets is the latest. If you haven't heard it, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So for more, we're joined by Mitmac Motors CEO Bobby Petkov. Bobby, good evening to you. And, you know, this is such an awful subject, yet it's so normalized in South Africa because of the high rates. I think at least 57 cars every day or 57 incidents of hijacking like this every day. Describe how this new tactic works. So I, I just want to say thank you for the wonderful show. You and your team are amazing. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank we are you. Huge fans. We often don't get that, but thank you. I know it's what people think, but thank you. We really appreciate it, ma'am. Thank you. So unfortunately, this blockage method has become more and more popular, especially with the higher end vehicles that criminals target. So typically what they will do is they'll identify a vehicle that is in demand currently and they will follow you to a fast food establishment and they will make sure that the car in front of you is one of their cars and the car behind you is one of their vehicles as well. So by the time the first car is at the collection point, that's when the criminals jump out, point you with a weapon and say, get out the car. So you are actually stuck. You can't go backwards. You can't go forward. Then the vehicle in front obviously leaves. And uh, when you leave, the vehicle behind you leaves. So it happens so quickly and people are, they, they are in shock and, and it, it's just awful. And it's, it's normally the higher end vehicles that get hijacked that way. If there's time, we'll talk about, um, you know, whether we need to be changing what we're driving in South Africa today. But I'm just trying to wrap my head around the level of preparation that is needed to perfectly synchronize the scenario that you've described to us. Um, presumably, everyone has to be in wait near the fast food establishment and you'd have to sort of time it because, you know, people drive in and they, they get straight into the queue and that's it. It's not always as if the queue is accessible, uh, you know, from an exterior point. You, you kind of have to follow a queue or, or something like that. So is that what you're sure. saying, where that prime spot is? They're lying in wait, yeah. effectively. Sure. And remember, the criminals are professionals at what they do. So if they identified that specific vehicle, let's say it's a high-end BMW or Mercedes-Benz, they will normally two to three days follow you and track your trends and see what you do after work where do you drive do you normally pick up fast food on fridays do you normally pick up fast food on saturdays and they plan it to the t they are experts in what they do okay so it's not necessarily that they they you know it's not like they're waiting at the you know the fast food outlet or whatever and then hijacking you there this is something they've planned days in advance is typically how it happens okay yes ma'am so why do you think they're emboldened to strike there and what makes it a prime location? Because again, I'm thinking even in front of both cars uh, and behind the other one, in front of the one and behind the other, there, there are other vehicles. Uh, and so their, their risk is potentially higher. So normally at a fast food place or when you are stationary, what do we all do? We on this thing. And that's when we are least alert and we don't really know what's happening around us so you're comfortable you're calm you're not on the lookout and that's when they strike also what we've heard of and what we've seen on the rise is when you enter a estate or when you enter your home a freestanding home before you open the gate that's when the criminals also block you from behind and quickly jump in and take the vehicle so it's always that element of surprise where you can't really reverse out of the situation so you know people that are watching the show need to be aware mm. especially when they are entering their house to make sure that there is a way for you to get away going forward and not relying backwards uh, yeah. all the time because your limbic responses take over you in fight flight or, or freeze mode um, and it's very hard to predict how you would react so bobby we're told to be vigilant and and you've mentioned uh you know some of the the ways in which we can do that but how do you actually profile a would-be hijacker unfortunately you can't because um speaking from experience unfortunately at our dealership we've been victims of crime many many times and um i've had the opportunity to meet some of the people that were arrested and they are normal soft-spoken uh, very decent, well-dressed, not mm. aggressive looking. It's not the typical 
you know, scar on the face and tattoos and big and, and rough. It's very soft, calm, soft-spoken people that, uh, that tend to commit these awful crimes. I can corroborate what you're saying because that's exactly what happened to me when I was hijacked. Very nice guy. Uh, could you please step away or else? Um, all right. So in that situation, I mentioned the limbic responses. It's very hard to predict what you would do. But I believe given the statistics and as you say, uh, you know, the incidences are, are also on the rise. What is the best way a motorist can respond in that moment? So. First of all, you need to, to show the, the person that is busy robbing you, hijacking your hands to make sure that uh, you are no danger to him. If your safety belt is on, just say, may I please remove my safety belt and exit the car. Just comply, stay calm, remove the safety belt, exit the vehicle and run away. That's the best thing that you can do. And I suppose the other question, I don't want to name the brands, but there are certain brands, and you reference that as well, that are deemed higher risk, in other words, more desirable for those that want to uh, dispossess you of them. Should people just buy boring cars? And again, I don't want to mention any names and offend anyone. Or, you know, should we just drive old cars? What should we do? <laughs> It's so difficult and it's the old saying, supply and demand. You, the, the moment something is in demand, um, the demand grows on both sides. If we are to isolate a certain vehicle, there's thousands sold every month, meaning there are thousands that come into accidents, there's parts needed, there is um, fenders, headlights, airbags, all this other stuff that's needed. So. Even if we stop buying that certain brand of vehicle that is currently being hijacked and stolen and we move to a boring brand, before you know it, the boring brand will be the stolen and hijacked vehicle. That's just how, you know, that's just how economics work. Yeah, supply and demand. Thank you for talking to us.